Hi folks. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to see you again. <clears throat> I'm going to read some stuff from the Clementine homilies again. And uh, I was amazed at how much backlash I got on that. I'm just sharing this as information, okay? I think it's worth getting the book because it just gives you some thoughts and insights. Okay, even if it's been altered, I'm not calling it scripture. I'm just saying there's some inter interesting things to think about on this. And so this time here, and also I know that some people say that, uh, a Simeon in here is really a magician and not actually Paul, but the things he says and the things he quotes sound so much like Paul that it's hard for me not to uh, think it think that might be who it is. And so, um, <clears throat> so this here let's uh, it talks about supernatural visions, and this is some interesting points here. I just highlighted some key areas on page two sixty seven. And Peter said, you proposed to speak to a point, you replied to another. For your presupposition was that one is better able to know more fully and to attain confidence when he hears in, in uh, consequences of an apparition, of an apparition, than when he hears it with his own ears. But when you set about the matter, you were for persuading us that he who hears through an apparition is more sure than he who hears with his own ears. Does that make sense? Finally, you alleged that on this account, you knew more satisfactorily the doctrines of Yeshua than I do, because you heard his words through an apparition. Apparition, that's right. But I shall reply to this presupposition that you made at the beginning. The prophet, because he is a prophet, having first given certain information with regard to what is objectively said by him, is believed with confidence. See, he heard it right from Yeshua. And being known beforehand to be a true prophet, and being examined and questioned as a disciple wishes, he replies, but he who trusts in apparitions or visions or dreams is insecure. For he does not know to whom he is trusting. See, visions and dreams, you don't know who's giving them to you. For it is possible either that he may be an evil demon or a deceptive spirit pretending in his speeches to be what he is not. I thought that was interesting. But if anyone should wish to inquire of him who he is, who has appeared, he can say to himself whatever he likes, and thus gleaming forth like a wicked one or remaining as long as he likes, he is at length extinguished not remaining with the questionnaire so long as he wished him to do for the purpose of consulting him. For anyone that sees by means of dreams cannot inquire what about whatever he may wish, for reflection is not in the specific power of one who is asleep. Hence, does that make sense? Hence, we desiring to have information in regard to something in our walk, waking hours inquire about something else in our dreams. Or without inquiring, we hear about matters that do not concern us. Or awaking from sleep, we are dispirited because we have neither heard nor inquired about those matters which we were eager to know. So he's saying that dreams and visions, uh, you can't, it's, it's, it's a one-way thing. It's, it's not responsively. You can't respond back and question things. Okay, the evidence from dreams discussed. <clears throat> so Simeon said, If you maintain that apparitions do not always reveal the truth, yet for all that visions and dreams being God sent, do not speak falsely in regard to those matters which they wish to tell. Mm. And Peter said, 
you might have to rewind this once in a while and hear I had to read some of these twice. Peter said, you are right in saying that. Being God sent, they do not speak falsely. But it is uncertain if he who sees has seen a God sent dream. How do you test it? Lost my place. God sent dream. To do. But he, okay, let's see. Vision is true. God sent dream. And Simeon said, if he who has had a vision is just. See, he said, if you're just, he has seen a true vision. And Peter said, you're, you, are, you were right. You were right. But who is just? If he stands in need of a vision that he may learn what he ought to learn and do what he ought to do. And Simeon said, grant me this, that the just man alone can see a true vision. And I, he wants him to agree with him. And I shall then reply to the one, to the other point. For I have come to the conclusion that an impious man does not see a true dream. Peter said, this is false. I can prove it both apart from scripture and by scripture. That's really, really interesting. Okay, I'm trying to see where I need to stop and start. But I do not understand to I do not undertake to persuade you. For the man who is inclined to fall in love with a bad woman does not change his mind so as to good. But sometimes they love the worst woman through pre, uh, preposition <laughs> pre, presuppositions, though they are conscious that there is another who is more excellent. And you are ignorant in consequence of such state of mind. And Simeon said, dismiss this subject and discuss the matter of which you promise to speak. For it seems to me impossible that impious men should receive dreams from God in any way. He's saying the bad guys don't hear from God. That's Listen to what Peter says. None but evil demons appear in the impious. No, Peter said, I remember that I promised to prove this and to give my proofs in regard it to it for, from Scripture and apart from Scripture. And now listen to what I say. We know that there are many, if you will pardon me the statement, and if you don't, I can appeal to those who are present as judges, who worship idols, commit adultery, and sin in every way, and yet they see visions and dreams, and some of them have a pair of apparitions of demons. For I maintain that the eyes of morals, mortals cannot see the incorruptible form of the Father or Son because it is illuminated by exceeding great light. Wherefore, it is not because Yahweh evades, yeah, evades, but because he pities. And he cannot be seen by man who has been turned into flesh, for he who sees God cannot live. Scripture. For the excess light dissolves the flesh of a human who sees, unless by the secret power of Yahweh the flesh be changed into a natural light so that it can see light, or the substance of light be changed into flesh so that it can be seen by flesh. For the power to see the Father without undergoing any change belongs to the Son alone. But the just shall, as also in like manner, behold Yahweh. For in the resurrection of the dead, when they have been changed, as far as their bodies are concerned, into light and become like angels, they shall be able to see Him. Finally then, if an angel be sent, that he may be seen by a man, he is changed in the flesh, that he may be able to be seen by flesh. For no man can see the incorruptible power, not only of the Son, but not even of an angel. But if one sees an apparition, he should know this is the apparition of an evil demon. Chapter whatever. 20 or 17, page 270. 
But it is manifest that the impious see true visions and dreams and can prove from Scripture finally then it is written in the law how Amalek, who was impious, wished to defile the wife of just, just Abraham by intercourse, and how he heard the command from Yahweh in his sleep, as the scripture has said, touch not to touch her because she dwelleth with her husband. Pharaoh also was an impious man, saw a dream in regard to the fullness and thinness of the, ear, of the ears of corn, to whom Joseph said, when he gave the interpretation that the dream had come from Yahweh. Nebuchadnezzar, who worshipped images and ordered those who worshipped God to be cast in fire, saw a dream exceeding over, exceed, extending over the whole age of the world. And let no one say, no one who is impious sees a vision when awake. That is false. Nebuchadnezzar himself, having ordered three men to be cast into the fire, saw a fourth when he looked into the furnace and said, I see the fourth as the son of Yahweh. And nevertheless, thou sh though they saw apparitions, visions, and dreams, they were impious. Thus, we cannot interfere with absolute certainty. No, we cannot infer with absolute certainty that a man who has seen visions and dreams and apparitions is undoubtedly pious. Say, to me, that was a very important statement. For thus we can fear, infer with absolute certainty that a man who has seen visions and dreams and apparitions is undoubtedly pious. See, that's in question. For in the case of the impious man, the truth gushes up natural and true in his mind, not worked through dreams, but granted to the good through intelligence. That was incredible. This is page 271. This is just a small paragraph here. For at the very time when the Lord said, What do you, they say that I am? When I heard one saying one thing, this is Peter talking of him, and another, it came into my heart to say, I know not, therefore, how I said it. I know not how I said it. Thou art the Son of the living God. But he pronounced me blessed pointed out to me that it was the Father who had revealed to me. And from this time I learned that revelation is knowledge gained without instruction and without apparitions or dreams. That I thought was really, really interesting. And this is indeed the case. Help understood. Okay. Opposition to Peter under re unreasonable. Oh no, this is okay. This is this is the one really good part here, okay? <laughs> this is uh, Peter speaking. And then our Yeshua appeared to you in a vision, made himself known to you, talking about Paul, and spoke to you. It was as one who is enraged with an adversary. And this is the reason why it, through a vision or dreams or through revelation that were from without, that he spoke to you. But can anyone be rendered fit for instruction through apparitions? That's a good question. Can anyone be rendered fit for instructions, teaching others through an apparition? And if you will say it is possible, then I ask, why did our teacher abide and discourse with a whole year to those who were awake? And how are we to believe your word when you tell us he appeared to you? What proof do you have? And how did he appear to you when you entertain opinions contrary to his teaching? He's making incredible points right here. But if you were seen and taught by him, Yeshua, and became his apostle for a single hour, proclaimed his utterances in, and interpret his sayings, interpret his sayings, love his apostles, contend not with me who co accompanied with him, 
For in direct opposition to me, who am a firm rock, the foundation of the church, you now stand. If you were not opposed to me, you would not accuse me and revile the truth proclaimed by me in order that I may not be believed when I state what I myself have heard with my own ears from the Lord, as if I were evidently a person that was condemned and in a bad repute. But if you say that I am condemned, you bring an accusation against Yahweh, who revealed the Christ to me, Peter, and you invert yeah, you invite, you invert against him who pronounced me blessed on account of revelation. But if indeed you really wish to work in the cause of tr truth, learn first all from us that we have learned from him and become a disciple of truth. Become a follow, fellow worker with us. Praise Yahweh. And that's one of the things that this encouraged me because I think about how many people do I know that said, oh, I had a vision or I had a dream and the Lord showed me this and the Lord showed me that. Oh, I get so tired of hearing that. Where Peter's making it clear, they received instruction and he received a revelation without being instructed that was still along the lines of, of what was consistent with what they're sharing and stuff. And so, I just thought that was interesting. You can rewind it and, or you can buy the book or go online and look it up. Uh, I'm still going through the thing, but uh, every once in a while I run into something here that is just incredible. And I think back as a child and as someone growing up in the church of who I thought was spiritual because who they say they hear. So you trust people and what their words are. You trust people because they have dreams and vision and apparitions and this and that. And, uh, uh, you know, it, to me, that's almost as bad as a person saying, I, I got a flat tire today. The devil is trying to stop me from going someplace. And it's like, well, the shingle truck ahead of you dropping nails out from the hole in the bed, bed of their pickup, you know. It's kind of another problem. So, anyway, this is just some information. I thought this was really interesting on, on this. And so I wanted to share this. And I, I might even have more stuff coming up. So, Father Yahweh, I'm so grateful that... Uh, we have all kinds of resources now. I am totally accountable for the information I'm getting and giving. Father, I want to just encourage people to go to you, listen to you, start with the Torah, start with what the Messiah said, and go from there. Father, you have, you want to cleanse the church, you want to raise up a remnant, and we want to be part of it in Yeshua's name. Amen.